strong. Islam is strong. They try to make us think that it's weak. And that we are weak and that we're stupid. And this is what you're living with all every day. In Egypt, where I live now, you don't have that. You don't every day people telling you that Islam is rubbish. Here you've got that. And, and as Muslims, we have to be very strong. And, and really, you've come along tonight. You've, you've come along to for a talk about Islam. And Allah. When everything is telling you that this Islam is rubbish, it's bad. It's, it's backward. Freedom, you know. Free, do you know this freedom? Freedom, I saw on Al Jazeera the other day. Al Jazeera English. It showed in, in Germany. There's a, there's a town in Germany and, and a state government there. Because there are so many unwanted babies in this town. And what's, what, what was happening was the parents were taking their little unwanted baby and leaving them next to dustbins because they didn't want them. So the state government thought this is not very nice. So they built special hatches in the wall where the hospitals are. This, as God is my judge, this is true. And you take a little unwanted baby with you and you open the hatch, you open the hatch and you put the baby in in lovely warm blankets and, and nice colours and you know lights, things like that. And you close the hatch and ring a bell and someone comes and takes your unwanted baby. And they tell us about Islam. Muslims, Muslims don't put their parents in homes, do they? You don't put your parents in a home when they get old. You send them away and Rabbi will see you every week. Of course not. You know, in, in, in Egypt where I, where, where I live, there's many things about Islam, you know, but the West, if only it knew what Islam was really like, they'd be begging to be Muslim. I mean, just imagine, you go to Egypt and a lad of 17 holding his dad's hand as he crosses the road. Kissing his little brother. I saw not too long ago, there was a little boy, we'll say he was about 10, and he was carrying his, his little sister down the street. Little, she much even maybe one or two. And in 50 meters, he must have kissed her a hundred times. You know, just squeezing her and kissing her and cuddling her. That's Islam. You know, in Islam, you don't have what I saw this morning. All of those people, everything, with nice shoes and suits and umbrellas and everything, going to work. And not a smile between them. They've got money and they've got work and they've got nothing. Nothing. And that little boy, Ahmed, or whatever we could call him, with no shoes on his feet, he'd more than they ever have. Do you know, do you know during the time of the, the cartoon crisis, uh, the, queen of, the Queen of Denmark, she was heard to she was heard to say she was heard to talk about those Muslims. She said, "No Muslims." What she said, "Those Muslims for whom religion is everything." As if it was the most ridiculous thing. You know, she said, "Those Muslims who are sitting on the outside of life." But for Muslims, she missed the point. For Muslims, religion is everything. It is everything. We walk into a room. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. We take a drink. Bismillah. Everything we do. Alhamdulillah. Everything. We know Islam informs everything we do. It informs how we get up in the morning and how we go to bed at night. It informs uh, a man's relations with his wife, with his kids, with his work, everything. It's a complete, complete way of life. But unfortunately, at press, TV, and you're the ones that carry the, the weight of it all because it doesn't want you to be good. I, I, I'm a great believer that... Uh, I, I do a lot of work with other religions, with other religions, and, and some Muslims don't quite understand why I do it. I think they perhaps think, hmm, he's not really got the Catholic out of him, you know, he's, he talks to these Catholics, gives talks in churches and that kind of thing. But that's not what it is. Islam is strong, okay? We don't have to talk to anyone. We're not going out of weakness to talk to people. We're going out of strength. We believe as Muslims, we believe that Islam has existed since the beginning of time, and that it's the natural religion of mankind, that everyone in a free state <coughs> would be Muslim. They come into this world as Muslim. But it's the action of their parents that makes them Christian or Jewish or Buddhist or whatever it is. So when we talk to other religions, we don't do it out of weakness. We do it out of strength. And, and, and we show respect to other people. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we be the most respectful of people to others? It's the very essence of Islam to be merciful and kind and tolerant and respectful.
So, so we deal with all people of goodwill. Muslim, as I've said, Muslims are not looking for anyone's approval. They don't need approval from Tony Blair or George Bush or anyone. We don't need approval and they don't look for it. But what we do as Muslims is we want to be understood. We want people to see what Islam is really like. Okay, another book. Last year, I, I, I did a tour, Blindness on Forces. I'm just starting today. This is the first of 16 universities. 16 universities and three Dawa training workshops. So that's 19 cities in three weeks. And I wrote the last year when I came, I, I wrote this about it. The, the speaking tour, which was organized by FOSIS, the Federation of Student Islamic Societies of the UK and Ireland, took in the universities of London, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Liverpool, Bristol, Manchester, and Swansea. In each city, the Student Islamic Society vied with its fellows as to how hospitable they could be. As the week went on, things just got better and better. I dare not single out any university for special praise, but each event was special in its own way. We should mention Swansea, since after that talk, a young lady came forward to declare shahada. When she joined us the next day for Friday prayers in the mosque, glowing in her new hijab, all hearts melted. And the, and the, the title of that chapter is Holding Fast to the Rope of Allah. Holding Fast. And if I say anything to you today, it's to say that you know, you've got to be strong and you've got to realize what's important in your life. You know, as young people, we make mistakes. Of course we do. We do things we shouldn't do. Of course we do. Grown-ups did it as well, but look what they're doing. You know, everyone makes mistakes. As Muslims, we should remember what's important to us and hold fast to the rope of Allah. And every so often, ask yourself, you know, what does Allah want in my life? Where is it? Islam means submission, submitting to, to Almighty Allah's will. Doing what Allah wants, not what I want. A lot of Muslims mistakenly think that you've got to be miserable to be Muslim. You know, you, you've all met them. You've all met the brothers and sisters who are so miserable. We're Muslims. Muslim brothers, salam alaikum brother. Don't even look me in the eye. You know, where I teach at the moment, it's the most miserable place I've ever been in my life. And it's called an Islamic Institute. Miserable. Everyone miserable. Out in the street. Everyone is laughing and joking and all this fun. But you set foot inside this Islamic building and suddenly you've got to be, you know, stand straight. And, and when, when I got there, I said to someone, why is no one smiling? Why, why, why aren't they smiling? We should be the happiest men. No one's smiling. No one says salam alaikum to anyone. And it's funny that there's a, there's a group of uh, Turkish students, Sufi students for, from Germany. They're Turks, but from Germany. And, and they, they dress like something from the Ottoman Empire. They're very, very uh, elaborate clothes that they wear. They look very nice. But, and very, very long beard, very, very fine beards. And they came in the first day, and I said, Salam alaikum, because I was dressed like this. Salam alaikum. Salam salam. And they moved on. Next day, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. After three weeks, Salam alaikum. Okay, Palak, how are you doing? You know, as Muslims, what we must do is support one another. We must support one another. Life is tough. You know, life is tough enough without adding all these rules and regulations about how you talk to a girl and how you do this and how you do that. But they're not rules and regulations. They're things to set us free. Someone said to me, what, in Cairo, this lady, not Christian, she said, it must be very difficult being a Muslim with all these regulations restricting your life. And I said, no, it doesn't restrict my life at all. It makes me free to be a real person.